tons of pollen in the bottom box. Uh, if you put a pollen patty on this hive, you're wasting a lot and you're encouraging high beetles and it's completely not necessary. Um, if this hive is all honey across the top, with no room for the queen to lay eggs and you're feeding, you're taking that syrup and you're preventing the hive from expanding. But you don't have a queen extruder between them, right? Nope. No. These are two brood boxes, yep. Okay. So then the other thing, so that's seasonally what I'm looking for. Make sure the hive is in good shape. And then the other thing I'm looking for is any signs of pest and disease. Um, this time of year, diseases are not really what we see. Uh, what we see is pests, and the number one thing we see for pests is, of course, the varroa mite. So this hive has, this frame has some pollen in it. some honey on it but not a ton and I can see this is capped honey this is honey they brought in a while ago and this is open nectar here which is likely the syrup that he just started feeding them so he's doing the right thing they're starting to take the syrup that he's feeding them and they're storing it and they're getting it ready for winter I always take I always start with the this frame here one end doesn't matter which side um, I scan it carefully for the queen I wouldn't expect her to be on here um, but you never know uh, so I scan it carefully for the queen, as well as looking, this is just generally what's going on. Take mental notes of how much honey, how much pollen, and there is no brood on this frame yet. So, so why do you start from the second frame? Um, you take this for outer frame, the very outer one, and you push it right to the wall of the hive, and then you take your hive tool and you push these ones to the other side, and that gives you the space. Wow. If you pull this one out first, Oftentimes the bees will attach it to the hive wall, yeah. and when you go to pull it out, it'll just rip and tear. Uh, and you don't want that one. Uh, we can look at this one too. And this one, again, similar to the other frame, lots of pollen, and you can see some new nectar being stored in here. And a real lot of pollen on this side too. So this hive absolutely does not need a pollen patty from now until March, easily. Probably not ever. So this frame, what you can't see is I can tell how heavy these are, and a lot of times when they're full of honey and nectar, they get heavier and heavier. So when you when I pull the frames, I can see how heavy they are. This one is a little heavier, and you can see more honey on it. I'm scanning these cells real close for eggs, which are often hard to see. I'm not seeing any just yet, but I'm not worried. We're really early into the inspection here. I look at the bees' wings. Um, there's a very specific disease related to varroa mite called the form wing virus. So I always look at the bees' wings. I always look to make sure the bees aren't shiny or look wet. There's other viruses they get that we call it like greasy bees. The bees tend to look wet. They look shiny and greasy. And it's, a, it's an illness they get, or several different illnesses they can get. Um, and that's the way it presents. So these bees look good. They look active. They're sticking to the frame. If you, if you pull a frame like this and all the bees start flying off, there's something going on. Um, so far, so good. This frame is a little bit light. Some honey on it, but it's drawn and they're ready for it. Everybody ever seen a hive beetle? No. This one right here. What is it? Hive beetle. Why is it? I thought Hive beetles generally are a big problem for bees. Um, it's very common to see one or two in a hive, especially this time of year. They don't carry viruses like burrow mites. Um, they're generally not a problem, but they can get to be a problem. And you can find them when you squish them. But one or two in your hive is normal, especially on the inner cover. And you usually find them on a frame like this where there's not a lot of bees on it. The bees do a pretty good job of running the hive beetles away. Um, they do sell beetle traps if you have an infestation of hive beetles. If you start to see 10 or 20 or more for your inspection, then I would strongly recommend you start trying to trap out beetles. And you can find different beetle traps on different websites. So this frame is a little bit heavier, which is good. So this, when they draw a comb funny like this, it's called burr comb. Generally not a good thing. Um, 
What I recommend to beekeepers is in the spring, the early spring, like April, um, if your bees did or didn't get through the winter, that's the time to clean all this up. And you can just take a hive tool or you can take a bread knife and just kind of straighten it all out. And next season they'll, they'll continue with it the right way. Um, it just looks like there was a queen cell here at one point and they kind of continued on that. And it's no big deal. It's just, you know, as beekeepers, we do need to kind of keep fixing these hives throughout the year. Is that just, just coloration mold? No, nope. there's, no, there's no mold here. The discoloration is, the more they use wax, especially the more brood is in wax, um, the darker it gets. And the bees can reuse the wax throughout the hive. So when you, as a new beekeeper, when you start in the spring feeding two to one syrup, or one to one, <coughs> you notice all your wax is very light, very white. If you inspect hives that are four or five years old, the, hive, the wax is almost black. And, then, and they'll reuse that wax. So this hive is about, about medium age, where this is a little dark, but not really a problem. <coughs> When the, when, the, when the wax gets really dark black, like, like black leather, um, it's time to replace the frame. Um, these ones aren't, these ones look fine as far as age. Just well, a little does it bit. affect the color of the honey at all? It does not, nope. But I generally, <laughs> I generally don't like, uh, I generally like to use queen excluders. I really don't like to see brood in honey supers for just that reason. Um, for multiple reasons, uh, has nothing to do with with the honey. But the honey supers, if they don't if they don't ever have brood in them, they'll stay <coughs> nice and white for years and years. Um, and they also, when you store frames, wax moths are a problem. And wax moths like dark wax. They don't eat clean wax. They don't eat wax that's never had brood in it. So if you've never had brood in the honey supers, wax moths are much less of a problem for storing them. going on up here. Um, he's feeding them so you can see them starting to fill the cells with, with nectar and soon to be honey. Um, there's no brood to see yet. I generally don't ever recommend one-to-one -one. and I, I do get flack from other beekeepers um, about packages. Uh, but you really, even if you feed a package one-to-one -one at first, which is often recommended, um, you need to switch to two to one quickly. Like as soon as they have wax drawn, as soon as the queen starts laying eggs and brood, it's time to switch to two to one. I see beekeepers stay with one to one far, far too long. And this time of year, it's absolutely two to one, without question, there's no, there's no debate, two to one in the fall. When you buy commercial feeds, they're, they're, they're equivalent of two to one, if you buy like the honey be healthy or anything like that. It's you know the pro suite or anything like that. Um, that's all there is. That's equivalent to two to one. If you feed back extracted honey to your bees, that's equivalent to two to one. Um, all commercial beekeepers that feed their bees and they feed their bees with a machine that looks much like something you'd fill your gas your car with gas with. There's a pump on a truck and a nozzle and they fill their feeders like that. All they use is two to one. They buy it and fall. Um, I'm just not a big fan of one to one. So we, should we already be feeding? Um, likely, it depends on your hive. This hive is pretty light and this hive does need to be fed, which he's feeding it. Um, but like I said, you'd want to be sure that your hive isn't bound with nectar and then you shouldn't be feeding. Okay. The queen needs room to lay. So it's, it's hard to say without looking at your hive if it needs to be fed. Some people get a little bit of a, a little bit of a knack, and you can tell by how heavy the hive is if it needs to be fed, just by lifting it. Um, that's an acceptable way once you learn how heavy the hive is or needs to be. And again, I do everything the same way. Start right here. So, if you have multiple hives and you start feeding one, should you feed the other ones too, or is it all individual? If you have the opportunity, I do it all individually. Okay. Uh, if you have three or four hives, you know, enough hives where you can look at them individually, it definitely is gonna be an advantage to, to look at them and feed them individually. Okay. Um, 
some people don't have that luxury because they have more hives or It's not unusual to not see the queen herself, but it's unusual not to find eggs or, or brood. Do they generally start in the lower box and work their way up? Um, this time of year, they should be in both boxes. They should okay. be in the, the just the middle of the upper box and starting to move down to the lower box. Um, would be a seasonally would be a good place. So you recommend two brood boxes and one super? Um, for the winter, I don't recommend leaving supers on. No. Okay. I like two brood boxes. You can do it in one. Um, it's a little more work and a little harder to get them set up right. If you see larva, but can't tell if you got eggs. This is pollen. Oh, okay. This hive is, we're, yeah. we're discussing this now. We think this hive has had, is having queen problems. Is that since treatment? What, what is the pollen? Which color? The yellow? Yep. <coughs> the brown stuff. The brown stuff. Yep. So if you can see down into the cell, you can see the yellow and the oranges. And <laughs> if you see larva but can't see eggs, <laughs> What's that an indication of? So technically, if there's larvae but no eggs, and you just so it's a risk of error. Human might be inspection, gone at that point. Oh, really? So you want both? And yeah. Ideally, uh, my treatments can cause problems and between larvae and but eggs to larvae. Twenty-one days. Less the evils, yeah. What I see might cause way more problems. Yeah. For larva to hatch into a bee. For an egg to go all the way to a bee. And how much so is that bottom bee been getting robbed, you think? Just three and a half. Well, well these bees aren't being robbed yeah. because uh, remember I pulled the frame out and I said nothing's flying off? That would be a sign of it being robbed. Um, these bees belong here. There's some hatched out queen cells. Um, not really sure what went on here. but. So what was your recommendation for that? Um, I would. Give it some time, keep feeding it. Um, you could, if we have a queen right hive, you could add a frame from another queen right hive to see what they do with it. Does everybody know what a queenless test is? No. Yeah. How to do it? So if you have a hive um, that you think is queenless, but you're not sure, um, and if you know, you all should know if you requeen a hive that already has a queen, regardless of how poor she is, um, they'll always kill the new queen. So in order to requeen a hive, the hive has to be queenless. But to test a hive to see if it's queenless, you take a frame with eggs, more specifically three-day-old eggs, but that's hard to find, but a frame that's queen right and has eggs on it, or very, very young larva, and you put it into a hive like this, and three or four days later you go back in, and if they're raising the brood as their own, they have a queen. If they took those eggs or, three, or just newly hatched larva, and they build queen cells, then the hive is queenless, oh. and that's your test, right? So if they do build the queen cells, you have two choices, but you already know the hive is queenless, and now you have two choices. You can let them continue to raise those cells, or you can knock them down and buy a queen. Um, I usually recommend knocking them down and buying a queen, uh, especially if you only have one or two hives, and um, it's late in season, like there's a lot that can go wrong. Um, but if they do raise the brood as their own, you have to find the queen and kill her if you want to requeen it, because she's in there. Whether she's laying or not, it doesn't matter. All right? So uh, buying a queen um, is a $40 queenless test, unless you <laughs> use eggs. <laughs> yep, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Ask the seasoned beekeeper. They'll all say, all say the same thing. <laughs> you want to put this cover back on? 
that's probably what I would recommend to do with this one. And being so late in the season, if they did if they did make emergency cells, I would um, recommend that you buy a clean or combine it. Um, that's another thing when you hear beekeepers talk about combining hives this time of year. Um, if you combine two queen right hives, one of the queens will get killed. Um, so if you have a good queen and the hive is struggling, you'd want to take the hive that's struggling and kill that queen before you combine them. That way they take the queen you like. <laughs> um, what's that? You should see um, four or five good frames. Yeah, I'd like to see two or three in the top and one or two in the bottom. Um, let's see what this hive looks like. This is a medium. Yep. So some beekeepers, because the, the deeps are difficult to lift, they'll run um, a deep box here and then a medium. And you can definitely overwinter that way and it's a lot easier to move the top box. Some people do it as a deep and one medium, and some people do it as a deep and two medium. Either way is fine. So again, this hive is, this frame is fairly heavy, which is what I like to see. And he's been feeding it, and they're storing the syrup in here well. Um, this will be their winter stores. <coughs> again, this frame is heavy. This is what we like to see. This is a good honey frame. See all the honey on that side? When you, you said earlier that um, there was no queen extruder. Is there any point for wintering that you would put one on between the... No, you should never have a queen extruder on when you, in the winter. Okay. The cluster will move past it and the queen will get stuck behind. So there's not a lot to see here, but what I'm doing is kind of gauging how much honey this is in this hive. So we, we know how heavy it is and how much more syrup it needs. And I can pretty much do that by the weight. Generally leave the burr wax, but that's a that's a piece of mite treatment that I've left behind. They don't they bees hate that stuff. So this top box is, is food for them and it's it's pretty well filled out, looking good, looking heavy. Not a lot to see. So if you had the mite treatment in there, is this honey that's good for consumption? Depends on the treatment. Oh. Um, that, that piece of paper I took off was likely from Cormac Pro, and uh, that's fine. That's fine to have your honey supers on. Okay. Again, you know, without even really inspecting, I can tell how much honey they have for the winter just by how heavy this is. Yes, that's an excellent question. It's hard to answer because I'm not a weatherman. <laughs> um, Especially New England. Generally, if I were to give you, a, if I were to just uh, take a stab at it, I would say middle of October. You want to be done feeding. Um, and the reason is it seems a little early because we do have nice days in the end of October and even early November. Um, when you're feeding syrup, you're introducing a lot of water into the hive, and the bees need time to dry it and cure it and turn it to honey. So you don't want to feed them as late as you can, weather-wise, because you'll end up with a lot of wet honey, a lot of wet nectar, and that'll cause moisture problems throughout the winter. You're better off get them full, get them fat, and let them cure it. Now, if your hive is really behind, um, you know, there's certainly exceptions, but if you're, if you're really, you know, trying to avoid problems, you're better off feeding. There's a lot of golden rod in bloom now. Wouldn't that be sufficient for them until it stops blowing? It depends. This year the golden rod flow has been terrible. So this frame, if you guys want to get close and see this, as an inspector, this frame makes me giggle. Um, we have honey in the corners, right? We have a nice flat, even brood, pretty good pattern. Mm -hmm. 
And we see the rainbow of pollen right near the brood. Wow. This is a frame that's this is a hive that's doing really well. A frame <laughs> that's doing this this is a picture perfect frame. There's no larva there. There's no larva here. Uh, there's, there's a few to the outside. Um, the, 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 the brood is maturing a little bit. So we're still kind of on the outside of the hive, so I expect we're gonna be more soon. What did you say made you giggle? It's perfect. Oh. <laughs> You're doing everything. Because there's brood on it, this frame doesn't have anything going on. I'm going to take this one out of the hive while I inspect, and I'm going to put this one back in. I don't want them to stay on that. What do you think of taking the empty one and putting it in the middle? Will that? Um, in the springtime, good idea. In the fall, bad idea. Oh. Bees are done. They're done drawing wax. They're, not, they're done. They're not going to do it anymore, no matter how much you feed them. Um, seasonally, they slow down. So this hive has open larva, and you want them to be nice and white and circled up like a little worm in there, and they look great. They look good. <coughs> nice brood, pollen nearby, honey nearby. When you look at the cappings, you want to look for punctured cappings or open cappings. This one looks pretty good. You gotta be careful not to be tricked out by the when they capping, they're in the process of capping the open larva. Um, it can look like a hole that you know, they, just, they just filled it in. So now we're on our third frame of brood for this hive. And we have the queen here. Oh wow. She's marked white, makes it easy for me. I asked Craig earlier, I said, any of your queens marked? <laughs> it's right there. So we know she's a good queen by her patterns and things. There's not much you can tell of a queen by looking at her, except there's something really wrong. Um, so let me give you a week. So two weeks ago, I took the mite away strips off. There were only like two frames of blue. Yep. So she's really getting back into it. Mm -hmm. yep. okay. She's doing well. She's got her. She's sticking her head in the cells, making sure she's. So she lays a thousand eggs a day. Not this time of year. No. In the spring. In the spring. Yeah. This time of year, they're really slowing down. And actually, this is one thing new beekeepers got to kind of understand is, is it's always hard timing wise to say when this is going to happen. Um, but your queens will stop laying completely, usually by November. So if you if you get a nice day like this, November, and you go in and inspect and you don't find any eggs or larvae. Um, Likely the queens just slow down for the season. So, so we had our queen on the other frame. And we got some open larvae on this frame. Again, they're doing really well with pollen here. So this is a good location for pollen. Um, they can see the glistening nectar. I don't know, I think he's feeding this one as well. It's probably syrup, but it's still good. Um, Um, there's a few eggs, not a ton. They're right on the outside of the brood, but this is kind of older brood, so I don't expect the eggs to be nearby. Yeah, I was just wondering about this other hive. Oh, I'll, uh, you want to put one in there? I'll, if I find a good frame, I'll let you know. Okay, then what the green I'll like to All right, how many new beekeepers have seen a bee emerge? Oh, yeah. God. And we have one emerging right here. Oh, yeah, oh, that. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't take yeah. long, usually five or ten minutes. If you're watching, it's like a, it's like a, every, who wants to see a robber uh, yellow jacket? Huh? You butt right there? Oh, yeah. Huh? It doesn't uh, take long. So, I'm going to do an alcohol wash. Who here has done an alcohol wash before? Never done one, wants to know, seen one? No, right. never done. Well, I do it. I've done one. Um, yeah. <laughs> a little bit different. And some of the instructions you may have seen. Um, those of you who have visited, usually I usually do one on your hive too. You've seen it before. Um, so I try to find a frame with open brood, and this has some. Um, we definitely don't want the queen, and we know she's over here. Um, and we want to collect about 300 bees, which is uh, about a half a cup, and it's also about the bottom of my stickers. So I have a couple of things to aim for. There's a half a cup mark on this jar. So what I do, um, instead of shaking the whole frame out, I just gently rub the bees back like that. Yeah. And just flip them in. Yeah. Yeah. 
get a couple from this side. You see right to the stickers? That's the most daunting part for most beekeepers is the bee collection. Yeah. <laughs> um, not that big a deal. <laughs> I encourage beekeepers to do these once a month, um, regardless of your treatment cycle. I mean, obviously you wouldn't treat, you wouldn't count during a treatment, but it's very important to treat, count after treatments to make sure it works. Um, the treatments that we use, all of them, and there are no exceptions, are not perfect. So sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're dependent on weather. Um, so you look at the weather and you put the treatment in and then the weather changes, like it's supposed to be raining today, right? So, mm -hmm. um, and then I just continue with my inspection. So this, this is it, that was it for brood, I think, with this colony. So what I would do, this, remember I said that bees don't draw wax this time of year? Right. So if you have a frame like this in your hive, um, this time of year, the advice is opposite in the spring, but this time of year, um, I would move it to the outside like that. You're not gonna do anything with it. You don't wanna put it in their brood nest. So now I'm hopeful that the queen will extend through, through these frames and they'll be strongly built up for winter. Same thing with this one. So later in the season, would you move that to the end so that so they're, they're not, they can get at that honey without going through the empty frame? I'm not sure. The reason I move it to the outside is so they can get, they're not going to do anything with it, so they'll never put honey oh, in it. That, that's the first one then? Yeah, so I put it out here. Well, this one's empty too. So oh, okay. Um, and if you have one that's half, one side is good, one side is bad, you can put it on the outside, put the bad side to the outside. In the springtime, you know, when the hive gets through the winter and it's, we start to get like late April, early May, we start to get nectar flows. Um, my advice would be the opposite, is to take a frame that's undrawn and put it right in with the bees. Because they love to draw wax in the spring, wow. um, like crazy, not so much now. Yeah, you just, they flat out won't do it anymore. So this hive is good, it has a good, a good laying queen. We saw her, although we didn't need to. Um, I didn't really see a frame that I would steal for there. Okay. Um, we got one more hive. More big one. That one's very big and very... A lot of bees in there. All right. Twice Good. as much as this one. So, and they followed me around, so... All right. You guys catch that? Yeah. <laughs> so then they... You might want to back up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get closer. Depends on who you are. Are they a different, different type of bee? Or that These are all supposed to be the same three. Okay. We got them from the same place. They're actually not my bees, they're the Legion's bees. And the Legion commander was doing it for a while, but he's become sensitive to these things. Yes. Um, this time of year, well, specifically because he's... There's a feeder on top of that one, one of those big feeders. I think this one is just, this one is just wrong. Um, yeah, so this one is wrong. I'll tell you why. Robbers can come right in here and get the syrup. They don't have to go through the hive to get it. And that'll encourage robbing. So, it was just an error on my part. Uh -huh. Anybody has ever witnessed the hive being robbed? No. It's devastating. Um, so you want to discourage that as much as you can. Uh, I don't like entrance feeders. I like all my feeders to be above the inner cover. Yeah, I like. Like I just said, with the notch down. Um, nobody can get this syrup without going through the entire hive. And that gives the bees a chance to defend it. Well, after the extract is super, and you still have some honey remaining, the falls, the early falls, can you put those supers on top of the inner cover and expect the bees to go after all that? 
Okay, she has a vein. So that's, the, that's exactly what you do with wet supers. If, once they're extracted, even if they're a little bit messy because of the, you know, the way you uncapped it, and usually when you know, anybody's extracted honey knows it's a very sticky job. Um, the wet supers go right back on a hive over the inner cover. And you can stack four or five of them on there if you want. Um, if the hive is strong, two or three days, they'll go up, they'll clean out all the wax, they'll redraw it and fix it. So it's all nice and neat again, and they'll move all the honey back down to the, underneath the air cover. And that's that's sets them up for winter, and once they clean it out, the less likelihood of ants or any other thing getting it in the. Why do you put the cover on? I mean the inside cover. If you cause if you don't put the, if you don't put them on over the inner cover, the queen usually just go up and start laying eggs. Ah. <laughs> Even this time of year? Yeah. Um, not. This time you're not likely, but you never know. Um, they might store more nectar in it. If it. Whatever is above the inner cover is technically not in their hive. So they just, for them, that's just robbing. They're just going up and robbing it and it back down. Right? So this queen, when I looked for originally, I couldn't find her. She was in the honey soup. So there's two frames of brood on the top. Okay. Ah. So that's why I put that back on. Is there any still around here now? Okay, These are so all empty frames, there's no Phoenix for the genius one. Put all There's not much in here. No, it's only two frames of brood. So again, this hive can be fed, which it was. We saw the feeder being removed. Um, all this is ready to be filled with syrup and nectar. So we'll make it into honey for the winter. So it's a nine frame. Right? Yeah, there's nine frames in here. It happens. It's usually not bad as long as, long as you squish them together tight and leave the space to the outsides of the box. Um, if you try to space nine frames, they'll make a mess. in there, that means they're not happy with the queen they have? Um, well, there's two things I see with this. One, it's all nectar here. So this is, they don't, these are old. So they may have thought about superseding her, and they may have, um, or they may have decided to change their mind and just left these cells. Uh, these are old. I can't really, I don't think they've been used, but they obviously have been thought about being used. Mm -hmm. I generally leave queen cells until I find the queen. Oh. <laughs> and then you can go through with your hive tool and fix whatever you want to fix. So again, the, the syrup that he has on here, they just fill in these frames with, with syrup. So the, the general progression, which I've you know, kind of talked about already, in this, you know, as when you put the second box on, the queens move up and they start to lay a lot of brood here through the summer. This time of year, what we're trying to do when we feed them is we're trying to crowd the queen down. We want to crowd we want some honey on the outsides here and we want to kind of push the queen to the middle and down so that they have plenty of honey stores for the winter. This would be an ideal frame to throw in the other hive. Um, how many of you have seen eggs or can spot eggs or want to try your hand at finding eggs? Anybody? Mm -hmm. I can. I can. I'll try. He's better at it than mm -hmm. I am. Here. Well, you want to do this? Mm -hmm. So I think. It's hard when I hold the frame, but when you want to watch your shadow. If you look down into these cells in the bottom, you'll see the little piece of rice down there. I can't see it. This frame has about 500 eggs in it. Really? 
Regardless if we ever find the queen this hive, we know she's doing well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's got some weight to it. It's not as heavy. I think they look like little shrimp. Oh, wow. Wow. So we talked about the queenless test a few minutes ago. Watch how hard. You take this frame here, take your bees off, has to be a beekeeper. Four days we'll know if that hive has a queen or not. And again, how will we know? They'll make emergency cells out of those eggs. And they won't make one. They'll make if they're queen list, they'll make at least ten. So it's easy to find. I've seen as high as twenty-five. Wow. Oh my gosh. So you know. It's not it's not a it's not a question mark. It's a it's a definitive way. Someone told me that you should kill off some of them. Um well if they do if they do make the emergency cells, you have a lot of decisions to make. But the point of the test is to see if it has a queen or not. Mm -hmm. So you, if you want to keep those cells and let the queen, let this, those bees raise that one of those cells to a mature queen, mm -hmm. you would probably knock down and leave them. One I think is too risky, but I would leave them three or four. Okay. Um, this time of year, uh, those queens wouldn't hatch for uh, 16 days, and that puts us to the middle of October. She needs another four or five days before she's ready to take her mating flight uh, end of October. You think she's not going to get mated? Yep. You know what I mean? So in that case, if he does, he'll know it's queenless, and then he'll know to either buy a queen or combine it. And he's safe to combine it with anything because he knows it doesn't have a queen. Um, if, if they do raise it at his own, he knows he has a queen, and now he has to figure out why she's not laying. And that could be a whole other... Will the hive go for very long before they make a queen? I don't understand the question. Mm. If, if they don't have a queen, they'll make a queen instantly, as soon as they get the chance. Um, that takes a while. I know. It does. It, does. it takes almost 30 days for a queen to go from egg to egg. So that's an entire month. So we wouldn't, if, and queens, queens are very successful getting mated, and hives are very successful requeen themselves. Like, May, June, July, even into August, um, September, October, no chance. No. I'd say the, the, the rule of thumb generally is, you know, May, June, July, the chances of your hive raising a, successfully raising a new queen is about 80%. It's pretty high. And even then, I'd say it's probably higher than that. Certainly not 100%. This time of year, probably less than 10%. The chances of her, there's not much drones, the weather's a lot worse, um, it just doesn't happen. If the hive that you just put that queen in yeah. had a queen, yeah. but she's out of sperm and she's a drone lady, would they make a new queen with that? Would they make new queen cells? They would try. Um, or would they, <laughs> yeah. still they have, they have a queen but she's no good, so what do they do? Because I think well, I have that I, it's that's kind of it's a it's a good question. It's but it's a complicated to answer. Um, I've had them. They've made. They try to make queens out of. Yeah. Bones, so they, they may. It did. Yeah. Um, they may. They may. Um, what I what I'd be concerned about in that situation. Generally, you'd know if your queen was running out of sperm. They don't generally run out and stop. 
It's, you start to see more and more drones. That's, that's what I'm seeing. More yeah. drones, still some cap drones. Yeah. That's um, there's eggs and larvae in there, but I'm assuming it's all drone at this point. Um, yeah, so in that case, you, you know, you have a queen, you have to find her and replace her. And is it too late at this point in the year? Um, if the hive is strong and, and there's still some viable brood, I would say go ahead and do it. Go ahead and replace her. Um, if the hive is way behind, um, I would just combine it. Combine. So when you combine it, if you have like a rolling and Italian, Oh, that doesn't matter. Does doesn't it? matter. Okay. Uh, yeah. she, had, she had Italian and then she had yeah. You'll end up with mutts, which is what most of us have. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you think so or not. <laughs> All right. They do look different. So, <clears throat> so you didn't find the queen anywhere in there? Uh, no, this down the top box. I didn't see her now. I'm going to go a little quicker because we're starting to lose these bees. They're not quite so happy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, um, and then I'll show you the results of alcohol wash. And uh, that'll be that, I think. And I'll feel free to answer questions or ask questions. So this is the pollen I was looking for in this hive. The top box, we didn't see any pollen. So it would be not, I would not recommend he feed pollen to this hive. Mm -hmm. But generally, this time of year is not necessary anyway. Um, so how much pollen do you look for? Like how many grains? Um, in a hive like this, a stronger yeah. hive, I like to see at least one good pollen frame. You'll see bits of it here and there, mm -hmm. um, but honestly, this time of year in this area, in this season, I'm looking for hives with too much pollen. Oh. They, they, they can crowd themselves out with pollen too and not give the queen a place to lay. Oh. There is the queen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. See another one. Yeah. That's a little white dot. No. I'm, bl I'm blessed. If you invite me to, if you invite me to uh, inspect your hives and you have marked queens, it's a happy day. Oh, I did. How late in the season are you doing spate inspections? Um, it depends on the weather. We generally, like mid, you know, mid October, we'll slow down and stop. Um. So you still got time. You still got a chance. Uh, just uh, so I can sign up to it. To give some of you an idea of how many inspection requests we get this year, uh, most year we get about 600 requests. This year we're um, we're one inspection away from 800. Wow. So I've actually normally I cover Bristol, Plymouth, and uh, Barstable counties, but we've been so overwhelmed that I've been pushed out to Hampshire counties on some days. We do. We're, we're struggling to get everybody once, and then we, we hope to get some of the other people in place. And then more pollen. So this is. Because there's more beekeepers? I don't know why. That would be good. I don't know why. I like it when people take advantage of our program, use our program. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's easy for us to justify what we do. So this hive is doing very well. We saw the queen, lots of eggs, lots of brood. Um, everything looks good and everything looks healthy. The only thing I would do is add the tenth frame to this box. I've got one.
this is the, the second half of the alcohol wash, the money half. Make sure you don't have any from last time. So you let the bees soak for a while and be very violent when you shake them. Um, mites are heavy, so they sink. So I generally do it upside down too, and just kind of keep swirling them. And the mites are under the scale of the, the bees bend, so you want to make sure you get them off and knocked out. And then the magic of this alcohol wash jar is you pop the inner cover out. So we got one, which is good. You can see one. Um, we have just treated with Formic, I think Formic Pro, he said. Um, we've got a couple more now. We go back and forth a couple of times. Until the number stops changing on me. So there is three in a very suspicious looking piece of debris. <laughs> but there's three. So you can pass this around. Anybody can look at that and make sure if you've never seen a mic before. Um, so with three, he has just treated. Three is, is the lower end of the treatable threshold. So what that tells me is his treatment was moderately successful. They're not all 100%, can't expect that. And the bees can easily get reinfected too. So we don't know what happened there. Um, but he'll probably, he'll likely need to treat again before these hives close down for the winter. So he'll, he'll probably, my recommendation to him would be to give them a few more weeks and then probably treat like mid-October, early November. Well, you, if, <laughs> I don't recommend treating hives blindly. I always recommend doing alcohol Check washes. Yeah, if you get if you get more than three, mm -hmm. you you can treat. If you get more than ten, mm -hmm. you really need to treat. <laughs> um, seeing how he just treated, three is not a bad number. Um, but it tells me that there's enough in there that the bees will likely have problems in the winter, right? So if you only treat again in October or so, November. Yep. Paul, your jars with the screen They are free while they last. There's 48 of them over there. Oh, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> if I had known there was going to be 100 people here, I would have brought 100 jars. Awesome. 48 and 100 people show up. Um, if they do all disappear today, you can email me or you can email the address bees at mass.gov and just the address and then you want an alcohol wash jar and they'll show up. Perfect, thank you. So these are definitely great. Thank you. And if you do it that way, with the bees at mass.gov way, um, it'll likely come to the good Oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I don't do that. The Kim, Kim does that, but you know, he, uh, he, always, he never sends just a jar. It's always a pile of stuff. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And even if you have one and you just want the pile of stuff, <laughs> so if you had to put uncap frames in a super and you put your inside cover on and then this, that super, can you feed on top of the super? No, you, you, can either, you, you can either have the, the, the frames on the elevator cover or the feeder because they might, they might just move it down and put it in that. Um, so it only takes a few days for them to clean out the right. supers anyway. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. a strong hive will do it in three or four days. Okay. Sometimes even sooner. Okay. Yeah, okay. So you want to clean it out and then you can stop doing it. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. Thank you very much. It was great.